From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Fisher testing positive for carcinogens in the Yellowstone River. We'll tell you if it has anything to do with the recent train derailment near Reed Point. You know, more extensive testing to be done in the area to figure out a source for this contamination. Plus, why travelers are okay with an extra fee at the Billings Airport. It's one less thing that you have to worry about. And a high honor for someone you see at the fair every single year. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Tuesday, August 15th. I'm Augusta McDonald. Top story this morning, it's the second part of a two-part series. Lawmakers increased funding to investigate human trafficking crimes in Montana this past session. Now advocates and law enforcement agencies are working to overcome some of the biggest hurdles to stopping human trafficking. Sharing your story is sometimes the key to entering its next chapter. I know with, with me, when I spoke up and I got to share um, what I felt I needed to at uh, the offender sentencing, it was the most empowering thing that I had ever done. And I think that piece is so important um, for everybody's story. Leah Wetzel's story of overcoming substance use issues and human trafficking is now opening up ways for others to see themselves more clearly. I was two years in recovery before I even knew what human trafficking was and was able to make that connection. She speaks across the state, her story connecting with many. Sometimes afterwards I'll have five, six ladies lined up and I see that look in their eye like they made that connection. Overcoming deep and complex trauma like Leah's takes time. She told me hers is a story of childhood and generational trauma. She began using substances at age 13 and became sober over 20 years later. Wetzel now trains and supports people working in human services and law enforcement agencies across Montana. There's a lot of gaps within support and resources and knowledge of what's out there. She works directly with others who share her same story too, helping them to write a new chapter. I see a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear to uh, come forward. There's a lot of fear in what might happen to me if I do say something. Her story, an example. If, if someone's still in the, the world of, of drugs, of toxic lifestyle, um, it's got such a corrupt outlook that sometimes until we have somebody that's been that example or has gone through it that we can connect with, we don't realize how powerful it is to, to speak up. Sharing a testimony in court is also key to many successful prosecutions of traffickers. Attorney General Austin Knudsen told me this is challenging when victim services in the state are lacking. State of Montana, we're, we're good at prosecuting bad guys. We're good at locking bad guys up, but we're not great about the backside of that victim services. What happens to that victim of human trafficking pending trial? and then after trial even. The Montana legislature funded two more human trafficking investigators and a victim advocate during the 2023 session. I do think we're seeing a sea change at the legislature. Changes to the criminal code that passed into law this session increased penalties for people soliciting sex. They did a full scale rewrite, mandatory minimums, did away with a lot of the misdemeanors. I mean, again, you, you could solicit sex from a child in the state up to four times and prior to this session, it was a misdemeanor. It was a $500 fine and some probation. That's horrifying. Soliciting sex from a child or an adult is now a first time felony with heavier fines and prison time as possible sentences. We have part one of this series on our website. Good morning, Miller, how are you? I'm doing good, happy Tuesday, everybody. Uh, are you ready for the heat? I, I meh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sunshine, it does feel good right now. It does feel know. good, like you know. You're getting uh, all that vitamin D, but absolutely. it's going to be hot today. Yeah, a lot of sunshine, going to be hot, so sunscreen and be sure to keep yourself hydrated. Best thing to do is if you have air conditioning, stay indoors as much as you can. We could see a record heat today, not only today, but a couple of days this week, and we'll show you those days here in just a bit. Yesterday, a little warmer than average or high near 90. We got up to about uh, 89. Our overnight low, though, was quite pleasant yesterday. Now it's the flip side. Now we're a little warmer than average this morning as we get up and at them. Top gust yesterday at 15 miles an hour. Now we could see some gusty winds as we go along this week, and that's going to be problematic because it's going to be very dry out there, low humidity to go along 
along with that extreme heat and with gusty winds, fire weather concerns will be an issue. It was dry yesterday with no rain, still pacing a little bit ahead for the month. Of course, we're still doing great for the year. No rain this week, maybe a change by the time we get to the weekend, and I'll explain why coming up. 63 right now at the airport, the dew points at 40. You can see that humidity down to 43%. Winds out of the southwest at about 15 miles an hour. Temperatures mainly in the 50s this morning. We do have some 60s on our way to highs in the 90s, and we're going to start to see some triple digits pop up today. We'll take a look at that with the complete forecast coming up here in just a bit. And like, it's a little bit drier, like you said, so watch those campfires. Absolutely. If you're, if Very dry weather anything. this week, yeah. All right, Millie, thank you so much. Yeah. Top headlines this morning. Fish are testing positive for toxic chemicals two months after a train carrying asphalt tumbled into the Yellowstone River near Reed Point. Five mountain whitefish showed high levels of panafrenine. It's a chemical found in many products containing asphalt, which can potentially cause cancer in humans. FWP says it's too early to say if the derailment is to blame. However, more than 215,000 pounds of asphalt have been pulled from the river. For now, anglers are being warned not to eat the fish. We just want to alert the public that they should not be consuming any length or any size of mountain whitefish from the stretch of the Yellowstone River. But you can still fish for mountain whitefish that there's not a you know, full closure in place where you can't target that species. You know, totally find a practice catch and release if you do catch one. Senator Steve Daines responded to news of the fish, fish contamination by sending a letter to the EPA asking them to provide more updates on the cleanup effort with the public. In a landmark decision, a Helena district judge rules the state of Montana has not upheld its constitutional obligation for a clean and healthful environment. This case held versus Montana has gained national attention for being the first of its kind to reach a courtroom. A group of 16 plaintiffs ages 5 to 22 sued the state over what they believe are harmful climate policies. The judge's ruling deems Montana's method for awarding fossil fuel permits unconstitutional. The state plans to appeal. And healing is happening for many of the Montana tribal members who fell victim to the Arizona sober living home scam. This morning, Q2's Diane Parker introduces us to one man now maintaining his sobriety at home after months in a Phoenix facility. That did nothing but fuel his addiction. Many Crow tribal members have been caught up in Arizona's sober living home scam, but when they return back to Montana, they often still need recovery. Some are finding success here at Absalica Healing, while others aren't quite sure where to turn. I got recruited out of jail, actually, to go down there for uh, 90 days. It's a far too familiar story. Empty promises of help and recovery. Royce Old Elk was sitting in a jail cell in Hardin when he says the Rocky Mountain Regional Detention Facility referred him to Mungo, B.C., a sober living home in Phoenix. It was supposed to be the next important step to overcoming addiction. Created an avenue for me to get out of jail and help myself. It was the exact opposite. I drank more down there than I did over here. Old Elk says he was drinking in the sober living home in the presence of staff members. We reached out to Mungo BC for comment and have not heard back. While this particular home has not been suspended by the state of Arizona, more than 200, including Sunrise Native Recovery, have. My name is Adrian Salago and I work with the Sunrise Native Recovery over here in Arizona. We're helping people get sober. I wanted to get information about the Crow Fair. This is how it usually starts, a recruiting communication targeting tribal members in a scam so sophisticated, this home even appearing on airwaves in Arizona via a paid advertising segment prior to being suspended. Battling an addiction, it is a hard fought fight for many people and finding the right treatment for them is a big part of their recovery. They talk about Sunrise Native Recovery. When homes like this are suspended, Montana the tribal members often end up on the streets in Phoenix with no way to get home. Many are now missing. Our hands are tied because, you know, we didn't send them. I think it's an injustice done to the client. I wish we had the money to help. Jackie Stewart is the director of Absolica Healing and Crow Agency, which is now welcoming tribal members like Roy Soldelk who find their way home. He's really doing well, maintaining his sobriety, and I'm proud of him. But many are still stranded in Arizona. What is the state of Montana doing to help our tribal members who've been caught up in Arizona's sober living home scam? This situation is very troubling. Our administration has reached out to the governor's office in Arizona. There are resources available to 
pursue these criminals. In a letter sent to Montana's eight tribal nations, Governor Gianforte outlines a promise from the state of Arizona via its 211 hotline to help Montana victims with temporary housing and transportation costs to get home and hopefully find success like Old Elk has at Absalica Healing. It's helping me become part of the solution instead of part of the problem. In Crow Agency, Diane Parker, MTN News. Thank you, Diane. Hotter temperatures like Miller's been talking about are on the horizon, but at the Billings Airport, winter is top of mind. City Council approved a plan last night to allow the airport to charge travelers an extra $4.50 a ticket to replace aging snow removal equipment. Travelers tell us it's worth it if it means clearer runways and fewer delayed flights. I wouldn't mind paying it in order to get on my flight. I don't think it would be much of a big deal because you still want it maintained and it's one less thing that you have to worry about. Airport crews clear about 60 miles of runway, taxiway, ramps, and other pavement out at the airport. The equipment used this past winter is more than 20 years old. It will cost more than $3 million total to replace. And in national news this morning, former President Donald Trump has been indicted for the fourth time in five months. Late last night, the Fulton County Georgia grand jury handed up the 41-count indictment against Trump and 18 of his associates for their alleged efforts to overturn Trump's 2020 election loss. The former president's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, and advisor Rudy Giuliani are among those named in the indictment, which accuses Trump of 13 felony charges, including violating his oath of office. As many in Billings know well, the name Bill Dutcher is synonymous with Metro Park. Now you won't be able to see a show, a game, or go to the fair without being reminded of his decades of service. Q2's Charlie Kleps explains in this morning's Positively Montana report. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. It's a road many have traveled and one that formerly wasn't named. But on Monday morning, this road leading into Metro Park was changed to Bill Dutcher Way and paying tribute to his more than 40 years of service here, a place he loves and one he's still trying to help out. I just run all around, do errands, help wherever I'm needed. The life of an intern at Metro Park during the Montana Fair is unpredictable. It's kind of fast paced and you know changing, doing this, that. Once fair actually starts, you're just running around all over the place. That's why most interns are typically younger and full of energy. Hello guys, are you ready to go again? But Bill Dutcher isn't your typical intern. It just keeps an interesting, fun life when you get to do things like that. That's right, former Metro Park GM Bill Dutcher is Montana Fair's newest intern trading in 16 years atop the Metro Park totem pole for an entry-level position. And I got my nine to six hourly job during the fair, which gets me out once in a while and, uh, and just seeing what it's all about. It's a place Dutcher knows a lot about. He first started working here over 40 years ago, cleaning, driving, or organizing whatever was needed from him that day. I started out mopping seats and uh, I, learned every I learned 19 pieces of equipment to drive. So each one was uh, just around wonderful people. And Monday was a first, the first time an intern was honored with a road in his name. This path leading into the Metro parking lot was officially named Bill Dutcher Way, a tribute Dutcher doesn't take lightly. It'll be an honor to think they're being welcomed into a, to a facility to have a nice, safe, fun uh, environment and, uh, and to be a part of that for as long as I was and in my little part being still, still am. <laughs> but for now, he's got a job to do, a unique opportunity to reunite with the place and people he loves. And that's what I love about being around this place, is just seeing the smiles and what this place is, was made for. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News.